Cut with Josh, take 27. Welcome back, nope, cut that. Nope, not it. Code with Josh, take 82. Welcome back guys, that's the one. In last week's episode, I showed you guys how you can master the fundamentals of Python in seven steps. And in this short series, I wanna go through each week and I wanna guide you through those steps. Well, before I do, welcome back to Code with Josh. And I wanna take this time to share with you the most boring book I have ever bought. Data structures and algorithms in Python. 748 pages of complete boredom. Yep, that's right. Now, I'm sure this is useful, but the way I learn and the way most people learn, you can't pick up a book and read it and retain the information. At least that's not me. I can't do it. So don't be like me. Don't go out and buy books that you're never gonna read, because I never read that. There are other ways to learn. And that's what I'm most excited for. I'm hoping that I can share with you guys the way I learn and the way I teach my students in these episodes. As a Python dev and more importantly a teacher, I'm stoked that I can guide you through step one of the pure basics of Python. In today's episode, you're gonna learn about very variables, the built-in Python functions, as well as conditional statements. This is everything you should be focusing on the first week you try to learn Python. Don't overwhelm yourself. Take a week for each of these videos, I guess. All right, let's jump over into variables and I wanna show you guys what I mean. But wait, before we get into today's episode, I have made you a handcrafted Python guide that I give to all my students on the first day of class. It's the first link in the description. Head on down and grab yourself your free copy that you can use for this mini series of Mastering the Fundamentals. And if you're ready to kickstart your programming journey, I have spent months curating three of my own Python courses, all of which can take you from zero all the way to knowing, from the basics all the way to more complex courses like app development and building your very own Python apps. If you're interested in these, head on down to the link in the description. That's my sponsor, myself, because I don't have one. <laughs> so long story short, guys, a variable is literally a word or a name that holds a value. That's it. It's a data element that has its own name and we use variables while working with data that can change. So potentially any data in the future that could change, we wanna use a variable because we can update the value of that variable. If you take a look here, I have created three variables. Name equals code with Josh, that's this guy. Action equals subscribed, because I hope you are subscribed. And lastly, time equals 22. I don't know why I put that, but just imagine it's 10 p.m. and time is 22. The value of the first two variables is a string, and the value of the final variable is 22. I created these unique names, and I assign them a value. And then lastly, I'm using the Python print function, and I'm going to print out a string. It's going to say something. I'm using the plus sign. I can use plus when everything is a string. If you're working with different types of data, you should probably use a comma or you're going to get an error. And that's okay, because now you know how to solve it. So down here it says u action to name at time. What this is literally going to say is use subscribe to code with Josh at 22. That's what it'll print off in your console. Let's take a look at a few more of these examples. Now variables are funny. So after I define one, right, I could have as many variables as I want, cost and rackets. But when I take cost again, I change the value. This literally changes the value of the initial variable. Because Python reads top to bottom, the first variable that has that name is going to be canceled. It doesn't apply anymore. So this cost here of 280, that doesn't apply anymore. Cost is now 220. And when I do total, that's a new variable, and I take my cost, which is 220, multiplied by rackets, 2, my total is going to output 240. That's great. Those are the basics of variables. But wait, I'm going to show you this in VS Code. Head there now. Since we're just playing with variables, let me keep it nice and easy for you guys. Let me make a few variables, let's put them together, and let's output a string. 
So going forward, let's say we have a variable. I'm gonna create one that's called name. Let's say we have little Billy. Now, how old's little Billy? Let's say Billy is 12. And let's say Billy, how many friends could Billy have? I don't know. So in school, let's say Billy has number of friends. Let's say he has five friends. And then we could create a variable that is a student. I'm gonna say true, he is a student. You can see that I've made four variables. The value of each is different. Well, age, number of friends, let's say age is 12.5. That creates a decimal. You are now seeing the four types of data. These are only the four types of data that I want us playing with in the first few weeks to get you comfortable with them before we go into data structures. So name, age, number of friends, and is student is a Boolean, that's true. Let's put these together. Now, you don't have to make a new variable, but I could. I could say output. The value of this is I'm gonna say name as a string, and because everything is a string, I can use plus. So I'm gonna say my variable name. We can say, let's say comma age. There we go. I've made it easier to read by putting it in three lines, right? But it doesn't have to be put in three lines. It can be one. I convert anything that's not already a string to a string by using the string function. Because we're just experimenting in VS Code, you don't actually have to do that. But it is good practice, and going forward, you should get in the habit of this. It's a good habit to build. Now that I have this, I'm going to go down, and I'm just going to print off, let's say, output. Let me run my code, and there you go. Name Billy, age 12 and a half, friends five, is student true. That's you playing around with variables, right? How many variables did you make? Change the values of these. All right, pretty good. Let's check out the next part of what we're gonna be talking about. Now that you have a basic understanding of variables, it's now time to introduce you to some other built-in Python functions. Now, Python has a slew of functions you can use, but basically a function is reusable code, or it's code that someone else has already programmed for you that you can use to do something or complete. Taking a look at some of the built-in Python functions. Here on the screen, I've put five. Just worry about these five for now. Why? Yeah, they're super basic, that's fine. You're just gonna get comfortable with how to use functions. Where do they go? What can I do with them? That's all you should be doing in this first week. You have print, which just prints off data that you, the developer, can read. You have input, you can collect user information from the keyboard, so basically ask the user a question. We have int, which converts a string to an integer. Because an integer is a whole number, if you wanna play with decimals, look at the function float. You have the string function. It does the opposite of the int function, converts an integer to a string. And then len returns the length of a string or other iterable types of data, like a list, which I haven't talked about yet, a dictionary, once again, I haven't talked about it yet. On the right is a very basic code example, right? I have three variables, cost, length, and total. Cost is asking the user to enter a cost, which is then converted to a number. And then length is asking the user number of days. That's also converted to a number. Whatever the user enters is held as the value to this variable. I can then use those variables in an equation and print off the total. That's pretty great. So you've been introduced to the variable concepts. You were introduced now to the function concepts. We're going to check these out in VS Code. Let's create a similar code example just like we saw before. Let's say I have my variable name, but this time I'm not going to hard code it. I'm going to ask the user to enter a name. That'll prompt the user. Then, let's say, okay, what is the length of your stay? So you're going on a holiday and you are gonna go for a certain amount of time. I know that my question is length. Length is a number. Ask yourself when you're creating inputs. Read it out loud. Enter name. Name, it's not a number. Enter age. Oh, okay, age is a number. You should be thinking that you have to convert those, convert that type of data when you collect the input. So int input. 
This is nesting. I'm putting a function in another function. I'm going to say enter length of your stay. I'm going to create one here that's just called cost. Let's say the cost per night is $100. Okay. Now down here I could do something like total. The total is going to be the cost multiplied by the length of their stay. right? And then here I could print off like welcome. Let's put the customer's name. This time I'm going to use a comma. And a comma is actually great because it applies an automatic space. So I don't have to think about that. Days. All right, let's just run the code. Here we are, enter name, Josh, length of stay, four. There we go. Josh, your length of stay is four days. Now I'm actually saying your length of stay, but I want to get the cost too. So why don't I just come down here in the next line and I just say, okay, total cost. Uh, we'll throw that in and we will say total. This time we can actually see our calculation results. So I can say Josh, four. Okay, total cost, 400. So in here I've used one, two, three, four. I've used four of those five functions I've shown you, but see if you can use all five. Remember, len returns the length of something. That's the one I didn't use here. To bring this week to a close, it's time for your last key topic, which is conditional statements. Now conditions are fun. They're the real powerhouse of any programming language. It's the real way that we can interact and talk with the computer. If this is true, do something. Otherwise, do this instead. The final stage of week one, right, is conditions. We need to understand conditions. And literally a condition, the value will be true or false. This is known as a Boolean value. Boolean is used in many programming languages. It just means true or false. In other words, this is a logical expression. So like, if something is true, this code runs. Else, otherwise, it's not true, you will do this instead. Now, literally, a computer understands two things. A computer understands zero and one, or yes and no, or, you guessed it, true and false. So everything a computer does, it's basically just answering small little questions. Is it true? Yes? Okay, do this. No? Okay, do this. That's what a condition is. If we look at a little code with that, well, not really code, but my example, right? So if is a Python keyword, else is also a keyword. Here is where we put our expression. So if this is true, this code runs. Else otherwise, this code runs instead. Now it's very important now that we see a tab. This is known in coding as indentation, or you might hear me in future episodes say nesting. Nesting is when you put something inside of something else. In coding, we do this with four spaces or one tab. This is your indentation. If you ever get an error that says indentation error, this is why. Check where the error is coming from and make sure it's where it needs to be. Should it be tabbed inside? A condition literally checks, is something true? And remember that a computer only understands yes and no. This is yes, this is no. You now have seen conditions, but we wanna experiment with these. Where am I gonna do that? In VS Code, let's check it out. Here we are in our conditions. Now I'm gonna do a few things again. I'm gonna do just like we saw last time. I think it's fun to say like enter input or enter name. That's great. And then I'm also gonna say here age. In age, I can collect just like I did last time. Uh, well, I didn't actually do that last time, did I? Enter age, two dots. Here you see two variables, name and age. Now, age is gonna be a number, so I wanna use this in a condition. I could use a string too, but a number is more fun and it gives the computer a greater chance of doing something. So here, let's say, let's create a conditional statement. I haven't been to America in a long time, but I know there's like this crazy rule in America that you can't rent a car until you're like, 25. It's something ridiculous. Like, how do you expect a person younger than 25 to travel and get around? It's, it's crazy. So I'm going to say here, if the age is uh, less than or equal to 25, well, I guess 24, then I'm going to print off and I'm going to say name 
that's a string, and I'm going to say, uh, you can not rent a car. Otherwise, else, print name, and we can say, you can rent this car, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so if my variable age is less than or equal to 24, it's going to do this, the computer. Otherwise, it's going to do this. This key part here, age is less than or equal to 24, that is known as my expression. Think of the expression as like a question that the computer is asking and it's going to answer. It's basically like saying, is age less than or equal to 24? Well, I don't know. If it is, do this. It's a question. It's your expression. When I run this, I'll do it two times. In here, I'll say Josh. I will say age, let's say 20. Right, Josh, you cannot rent a car. Let me run it again. Let's enter an actual age. Let's say Josh, let's say 26. Josh, you can rent this car. You see my condition changed based on the input that I entered, right? Now, you can also jump in here. A condition must have if. It must, that's it. Else is optional. And then if you wanna have more than one if, you can do something called elif, which literally means like else if true, also if true, do this, right? So I could say like else if name is equal to Josh, then you could do something with that, like welcome back. I didn't talk about that in the slides. Don't overwhelm yourself. If all you're ready for is if and else, that's what you're doing this week. If towards the end of the week you're ready for more, check out elif. Dedicate six to seven weeks. Don't zoom past it. Within that month and a half, you're gonna understand the core fundamentals that's gonna make the advanced stuff much easier. Hey, remember, I have a free handcrafted guide in the description that I've made for you. Head on down and grab yourself a copy. It's gonna make this week so much easier. And if you're looking for a course, or if you're not ready yet, I have a course for beginners. It's the link in the description. I have three for you, actually. You can take those along your journey as you're ready. I'm glad you were here for this episode. And going forward in next week, I'm gonna continue this mini series of how you can master the fundamentals of Python. Well, there you have it, guys. After 83 takes, I'm joking, I didn't actually do 83 takes of this. Uh, that's our episode for today. I will see you guys in the next episode of Code with Josh. Good luck this week. And remember, variables, the built-in functions, and conditional statements. I'll see you in the next episode.